JJ Brand Phillips, look at this, we've got a box. It says FMS, what does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we have a knife, let's find out. So you may have seen the flight already since we publish these videos in two chunks nowadays. And when we say two chunks, we mean the unbox. Oh my goodness gracious, you could have never told from the thumbnail that you already looked at and the flight you saw and how awesome this plane was. This is the FMS Futura version three, the trifecta. Yes, that's right. It took them three versions to get to this level of awesome. I hope somebody is keeping account of how many times you interrupt yourself as soon as you open the plane box. It's like every time. It's my favorite part. We plan these things out vigorously. That was in the script. Ah, ooh, look at this beautiful plane. You know, somebody is listening to us and they're putting different art on the boxes I've noticed. Or maybe they're not at all. Probably not. Beautiful, loving it. I noticed one thing immediately on this box. Do you notice what I notice? Because I notice an LED, at least oh, one. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh -huh. And look, wingtip LEDs, awesome. Cool. Okay, super excited. Version two, one of our best jets. And I don't say that facetiously. Guys, I loved the Futura version two. It was amazing. It was a great flying plane, rock solid landing gear. Had a good stance. It wasn't too high and cartoony looking. It wasn't too low and prone to disaster. Just amazing watching this thing fly through the air. So this is V3. So what does V3 come with that V2 didn't? Obviously, this is a plug and play, which means you got to provide your own receiver, which is, you know, it's like, as far as I'm concerned, not a huge issue. It just depends on which uh, protocol you're using, but this comes with Reflex V2. So Reflex has proven to be a pretty good option, similar to Safe and AS3X. Now, I'm going to just talk about this really briefly because this plane is awesome. When we set this up, we're going to be using Spectrum Transmitter and NX8. You could use an AR631. You could use an AR... 8360T, which would be dumb because you're actually using that without the stabilizer. Um, you could also use, if you're really being smart and you weren't gonna use the reflex, which I think you should because I think it's pretty good, you could use the Air 637T, which does have the boop, 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 beep, beep, boop. Or you could get the 8220T. Now, why are we talking about eight channels? Because the dreaded channel of control. We have throttle, in no particular order. Throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, flaps, retracts. That's six. Why is that a problem, camera crew? Because these things have extra channels. It's a six channel transmitter. That means there's six sets of plugs and a bind plug, which doesn't really do anything per se in flight, but you have access to higher channels to control safe and AS3X mm -hmm. function. Eesh. Okay, so what does that mean? That means when you get a six channel receiver, you do need to keep that in mind. I'm gonna just come back to the unbox in just mere moments, so stay tuned, guys. So what I would suggest is if you're thinking along the lines of an 8360T, stop in your tracks. Just do the air 637T and you will be satisfied. Either a TA that's from a crash bind and fly or just do the air 637T because at that point, you don't need to worry about the reflex. You just pull that out save it for another plane, it is a very good stabilizer. And yes, you can use that in other planes, you just need to make sure that the controls are gonna go in the same direction. So in our case, ironically enough, I had an old AR8000 that I haven't touched forever, so it's a perfect fit. So I'm gonna use that, it was just lying around, that's gonna function exactly the same as essentially the 8220T, because we won't use any of the forward programming functions in order to do this. The only difference, of course, would be the little red cable, you see the little red cable, red and black cable? That's gonna be the telemetry function that inputs to this receiver our pack voltage. So that is one function I'm gonna give up on for this particular plane, but shouldn't matter. Anyway, so now that we're done with that, the reflex is a big deal for people. People are a little bit confused. They're like, hey, what is the reflex? The reflex is an external stabilizer that works after your receiver, okay? You don't lose any functions, you just go through that. It acts as the stabilizer and auto leveling or off. So you can do a three position switch depending on what the gear configuration is on a plane. We usually do landing gear, 
flaps. There are inboard flaps on this, which I love. They are pristine. The flight envelope on this plane is amazing. We're gonna see what the V3 offers greater than V2. I'm guessing it's gonna fly a lot like V2. But anyway, then we have you know C that we don't generally use. D we use for AS3X off and then safe because we don't generally fly in safe. We don't generally fly with AS3X off. And then we have AS3X in our default position. That's the way I'm gonna set it up today on this. So in our case, because we're using an oldie but goodie receiver that I got, I think with my DX18, I just never used it yet. Still DSMX, it still has a satellite receiver, but I just never had a reason to use it because I always needed a stabilizer. So we're gonna use that today. All right, opening the box, amazing. So hopefully you guys don't have too many more questions along those lines, but as we break these planes out, we want you to understand that if you ever run into a situation where we're reviewing a plane that has a reflex or a vector or something of the sort, let us know in the comments if you have questions because, oh man, those colors are beautiful. We can help you, direct you to another plane that had mm -hmm. similar setup, yep. okay? And that's part of the reason why we begrudgingly go through full setup on every plane in our unbox build radio setup and it used to be maidens, but now we're just doing unbox build radio setup separate so you guys can skip it all together. If you've watched like more than two or three, you've pretty much seen the whole thing. There's some minor variations from one plane to the next, but at the end of the day, if you learn how to use this, one of your most expensive tools in your toolkit, you're gonna be better off. So learn to use this. Don't just download the, down, the, the uh, bind and fly profiles. Sure, you can do that if you're in a hurry, but you're gonna be really undermining your ability as a new pilot or as a returning pilot to the new technology. This technology is huge. It's also very expensive. If you don't need the technology, do not be fooled. Do not buy something like this. If you're not using AS3X, you are foolish. This does not have, I mean, you can buy this without AS3X and spend a lot less money. Well, maybe not a lot less money. So. Anyway, at the end of the day, the reason we bring these things to your attention because we get that question all the time, especially with new pilots. Don't be overwhelmed with the technology. We will get you up to speed. It just takes a little bit of time. So we're gonna cut this sucker up. We're gonna see what it looks like. I love the colors already. I love that it's not blue. Even though I love blue, blue blends with the sky, but so does red sometimes. So we'll see how this one looks. Ooh, wing joiners in the middle there. Also, your wings are stuck into the side of this. Oh, not a folded manual. Thank you, FMS, for listening. It's because I was holding a knife. All right, cool. So we have good manuals from FMS. We don't really have any issues with there that I, I don't want to say they're second to none because I really do have kind of a special place in my heart for e-flight manuals because I'm so used to the way they set up. That would probably be one of my favorites, but FMS is a close second. We never really have problems with them. They have good information. They generally don't leave out details that you need to know. Okay, so good packaging, very heavy duty, strong foam, which is what you need when you're talking about coming from China. This one in particular came from China. So when we get them, we get them from China. Oh yes, amazing, beautiful details, very smooth. Mold releases are very hard to see. You see what I'm talking about? Those little mold release bumps. There's a limited amount of them. Ball link on each of the control surfaces. Amazing oleo retracts on every one and quick release wings. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is only an 800 millimeter plane. It's not that big this way, but it has a long wing cord. It has a dynamic flight envelope. You can go very fast, you can go very slow. And honestly, guys, when I first got this plane, I thought, eh, eh, on the V2. Now that I'm doing the V3, I'm super excited because this thing is a firecracker. It will fly fast, it will fly slow, and it will do everything in the middle. And it's controllable the whole time. It doesn't have any bad habits, it just flies amazing. So love looking at it too. It's just a gorgeous plane. Very tall though, yes. very tall, 800 millimeters, but you're talking about probably 500 some millimeters for the height. Yeah. Add gear, you're almost as tall as you are wide. In fact, what are the dimensions? Uh, it doesn't say on here. Might Holy on. crap, this came with a 100 amp ESC. Are you kidding me? 13 gram all metal gear digital servos. Duh, why are we not doing that on everything? Hobby wing, 100 amp ESC. Thank God, finally. Okay, upgraded 3665 KV 2000. Why did they put the KV at the beginning? 
Thou okay. KV, rotations Where per volt. Mean? Okay, somebody was giving me trouble about this the other day. I'm just gonna answer this right now. KV, what other abbreviation in the history of abbreviations that are numeric in nature, the K doesn't stand for a thousand. It just means 2,000 rotations per volt. It's not 2,000, thousand, like every other K that you would have, like, like uh, that really super unusual one uh, called uh, kilometers, that really super unusual one called uh, kilometers, that unusual one called kilograms, everything's got a K. Anyway, I work in measurement systems so I know these things. There's a few things I do know once in a while. Okay, one of them is 100 amps is a good amount of power for this plane. One thing I would really love on this plane that I don't, and it's kind of juicy, cool feature, would be installing an avian so we could do thrust reverse. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if uh, FMS, if you're listening, if you threw in some juicy reverse features for us, then we would need nine channels, so it'd be terrible. I'd have to get a 10 channel receiver then. But the thing is, I would love it because that would be super fun. Now, I can tell you this, this plane does not have bad habits on landing, so it doesn't roll out for six miles. That's always nice. I'm kind of sucking at opening this box today, though. I can tell you that. It's well packed. Okay, so the second wing. These wings are slotted into this middle piece, so I'm just trying to be super careful. I don't want to break this plane because I love the way it flew, and I want to see it. I'm kind of super excited. If we get it done in time, we can have a beautiful sunset flight right now. Oh, so cool. A little bit of lift on the decal. I'm pressing it down now, as you can see. Good paint. Uh, raw white, some guys don't like that. I don't really care if it's a minor thing. If it's not like a white plane that has like a blue highlight or, you know, on cheaper planes, we sort of have come to expect that. That's fine, raw, unpainted is not a big deal to me. I kind of like it because when I crash, I don't have a lot of touch up, but that is a point of contention among some of you guys in the RC community. You think unpainted is cheap looking. I tend to disagree. I just don't care. Look at this. See these bumps? Look at this. Don't like the bumps do love the horizontal stab do love the fact that we have good reinforcement i can't see though because it's painted finished look oh, maybe you can uh, i can't tell mm. that feels pretty stiff there's got to be something going on in there but i certainly can't see i think it's just embedded right there a piece of fiberglass probably and you can see it's really thin there see that mm -hmm. right there quality control again what are you doing in china cut it out they got a new sticker maker. A new sticker maker, they wanted to use it. Okay, so I am liking the way that this top looks better than the bottom. The bottom has all these bumps. Well, See it this? covers up all the mold release bumps. Yeah, so but I don't know. I, 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 I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. It's gonna be bzzz. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be buzz. Okay, so continuing onward. Vertical stabilizer, absolutely gorgeous. Everything feels really good. Nice cut quality on the decals. Not a ton of overlap. A little bit of ding on my tail already. What the heck? Hmm. Where's the QC sticker? There it is. Fired. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. It's not that big a deal. Although, if you flip your plane, it's the first thing that's going to happen. However, this plane has a very big stance to it. So, when you come in and you land, nose up high alpha almost into a landing. When you smack that nose down, the landing gear is super robust, but it doesn't like tipping like an F-16. That's just the first thing that came to mind. F-18 also does that really bad. So, man, that thing was tucked in there. Oh, yes, look at that. So gorgeous. We don't have to worry about those pesky pilots because we don't need no stinking canopy. It's a Futura. Amazing. Wow. I love the lines on this. This is cool. I love the way they painted it. It looks so nice. And I love that forward facing ish light. I don't know if that's red, or if that's white. I think it's white. Was it white on the box? It looks white on the box. I love the way this looks. It looks cool. Easy access to the EDF. Obviously, that is a beautiful EDF. Look at that thing. Oh, yes. That is so cool. Gotta love it. Okay, so the Futura, super easy assembly if I recall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws or something like this. Where's your nut sack? Uh, my nut and bolt sack? Yeah. Excuse me, it's kind of a personal question. There's the reflex. 
all the wires are included. All you have to do is just plop your receiver in there. Clearly labeled, that's very nice. They do have uh, SBUS PPM mode. Okay, elevator, okay. And then this is an EC5 connector. They still give us our usual prop warning. If you're sticking anything in there and it reaches. Congratulations. Yes, exactly. Don't turn the motor on at the same time. So I'm gonna just, uh, oh, chip, oh, what? Oh man, wow, I tripped and look what happened. Oh, goodness gracious. What happened? Safety first. Saved, saved half a gram. All right, so that is literally everything but the nut sack. Not in bolt sack. Whew. Whoa, it's way in there. That was close. That was close. Okay, and then there's some foam. What else is in there? That's a programming cable, obviously. Oh. It's, you know what this is? <laughs> what? I love this sack. I know. Look, there is one type of screw. My favorite. Oh, that is so cool. The and best. then this comes with the USB-A to USB-C. Okay, you wanna know how you can tell this is V3? Because it has a USB-C USB on it. <laughs> okay, why do we need a USB cable? That is if you choose to reprogram this after you crash in miserable 50,000 piece crash style, which I'm hoping doesn't happen because that'd be a big disappointment. But show the people at home, the reflex is right here. That is the stabilizer, okay? You also notice that there's a breakout board right here, okay? The breakout board handles breaking out to all the other devices through these quick disconnects on the wings for the ailerons, flaps, and LEDs. Okay, there are six contact points, but really we only needed to have uh, ground, power, um, signal for aileron, signal for flap, and LED could have come off of the power and ground. So you really only needed four wires. So if you ever decide to add some functions to your wing, it can technically be done just so you guys know, okay? In case you're wondering. But they did it the easy way, which is fine, not uncommon. Okay, so this is the cable that comes with that. I'm hopefully never gonna need that. That would be the best thing that could happen. And uh, let's just investigate this nut and bolt sack quickly. So we'll just keep this for all eternity? Yeah, you don't need until the end of time, okay. obviously. Just checking. Okay, so I'm just gonna dump these nuts and bolts out. And when I say nuts and bolts, I mean screws, and that's it. Amazing, guys. Great. Do you remember just a few short years ago, we were getting like ARFs compared to what we're getting now? I know. And this, and this is a V2, so technically this is, excuse me, this is a V3. V3. So technically, we've already built this plane, and it was easy then. Yeah. But what's happening is we're just getting better and better equipment, which is really nice. Unfortunately, because of inflation, everything is uh, getting more expensive too. Yep. So that kind of sucks. But the reality is we know you guys want this stuff and we do too. So we're gonna bring it to you as soon as we can. And in this case, obviously we need to build this thing, but let's look how simple this is gonna be. I'm gonna get some screwdrivers. We're gonna put this thing in the backdrop just so we can enjoy it in the background. Oh, it's so cool. These are, I'm assuming you're gonna need a two millimeter. That is a beautiful sunset, by the way. Do you see that? Look at that no. beautiful sunset. It's taunting me, it's oh, saying, it Brian, come fly your new future. Don't waste lots of time doing radio setup and build. I'm probably gonna fail. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so I have sort of reserved myself, or uh, what, what did it say? Not reserved. Resigned. Resigned myself, okay, two millimeter. By the way, these are really nice. These came from a guy named Tom. He sent them to us. He's a nice guy. Thanks, Tom. I'm still using them today. You were right. I was wrong. Did he say, oh, you were talking to Tom. No, I wasn't talking to you. Are you <laughs> kidding me? That, that would never happen. I can't admit defeat like that. For Tom, maybe. Okay. Tom played a special part in my life. He got us those tools. Thanks, Tom. That's right. And I put them in <laughs> my flower, flower face. face. <laughs> That's how you know you've arrived. <laughs> Okay, wing joiner, stick it through the hole. Okay, watch this guys. Okay, take your wing, stick it in the hole. Okay, watch this. This is gonna be so cool. I'm super excited how easy that's, oh, there oh, it man. is. That was pretty hard, was I don't know. Impressive. I think I'm gonna get a plane stand. Did this also come from Tom? It did. 
Tom, you just, you sent us, you just like really complete us. You must get a kick out of that. You've seen it like hundreds of times now. I haven't, I haven't annoyed you by calling you out lately. Tom, it was your fault. All right, so we're gonna lay this down. We've got so many cool people that watch our channel and we really appreciate you guys being part of it. If you wanna help support us like Tom did, um, you don't have to send us screwdrivers. You can send us screwdrivers if you want. But really, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the canopy back on because this plane stand does not like those wires and stuff. They like keep poking out. Okay, cool. We did have to carve our last canopy. We're gonna see if we have to do that on this one. Oh. Okay, so then we'll just take the other wing. I'm doing this totally out of order. We could look at the instructions, but it's just so stinking simple. I just refuse to do that on this plane. I could do this without instructions. Okay. Am I having trouble lining it up? Sometimes when you go to stick it in, if you're in too big of a hurry, it doesn't always slip in quite as easy as yeah. you'd like. Okay, so I need four screws. So there's one, two, three, four. So if you have to disassemble this plane, you have a small vehicle um, because it's really not that huge. But just be aware, it is totally bolt together, okay? I'm gonna see if we have to do any hanky-panky to get this thing to line up. I don't think we will but I'm just gonna push on it if it doesn't go. I can't tell if it's going. Is it going? I don't think it's going. Okay, camera crew, can you turn that? Turn that screwdriver, please. Yeah, I had to push it in pretty hard. Yep. And by the way, we've noticed that before. Extra 300, 540 edge, same scenario where we really had to push hard. I'm not left-handed. Yep, I know, and that's okay. <laughs> See how it's not wanting to go? Mm-hmm. I think what's gonna go on is I just need to tip it and then, yep, there oh, yeah, it goes. goes. No problem now. That one was kind of tight. Honestly, I'm not thrilled about the tightness, but at the same time, I'd rather have it tight than have it loose. Yeah. We've had planes in the past where it gapped. I noticed the Cirrus was gapping on me, but I've crashed that one a couple of times now, so I, I probably can't blame the Cirrus for that one. It was Angelina's fault. Well, one of the kids in the back was throwing their they crayons. They're always up. throwing crayons. Yes. Next thing you know, you're deploying your backup parachute and you realize that you've killed the battery and so that doesn't even deploy. <laughs> I think those are actually rocket powered. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. I know. That is pretty amazing. We're getting there, guys. All right, so we're gonna flip this plane, I think, upright. Oh, yes. That is such a sweet looking plane. Super excited to see this thing in the air. I think we're gonna fly it on 6S, so 5,000 if we can make it work. But if not, we'll go, we'll go for the 4,000 like we did last time. I think that's what we did. Okay, elevator, elevator, there's two of them. And then rudder. Now just keep in mind, you can't put your elevator on. You can put your elevator on second, but I'm thinking you're probably gonna have an easier time putting the elevator on first. So I'm gonna do that first. Okay, I'm just gonna lay this right here. If you could just brace that for me, that'd be super handy. And then look, we've got nice quick uh, couplers on here. Make sure your colors are correct. So brown to brown. Brown is away from me. And the orange is toward me. Okay, it's super simple. And those retention clips will really kind of keep, keep the servo leads from undoing themselves because you do have to kind of force it into this strange area of the plane into this no man's land right in front of or behind the EDF. Okay. So we'll just get that to clip in there and you'll see that I actually plug that in backward. Don't do that guys. I'm surprised it went in, but it totally did. They should not go in, but sometimes they do. I did that on the A10 V1. I don't know if you remember that. I, I do. do. It sucked, mm -hmm. it was a pain. Okay, so now these extra wires, you're like, well, what are you gonna do with all that wire, Brian? That is a great question. I'm gonna fold this up, then I'm gonna fold it under, and you can see where the wires are. I'm wondering if I can just, camera crew, um, if I hold this, okay, let's see if we can pull the slack. I don't know if we can do that. Yep, there's two wires. Do you guys see that? I'm gonna yank on these wires. Yep, I can see there's a Y splitter in there. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some forceps, bent tip forceps, woo! I'm gonna reach in there, grab that wire, and just pull it back toward us. 
Okay, so as you can see, that is gonna suck this excess in. Now remember, don't pull so hard that it makes it inaccessible to where you can't get it out, but just keep in mind, you do have two of them. Um, so if you would slip and screw it up and then don't lose that, okay? So I'm just real carefully kind of pulling on that wire. The other rudder wire was just tangled onto the same thing. Which one do I have now? Oh. Yeah, good. So I'm just pulling the elevator one. And then there's a nice little slot for that to slide into. So if you're careful about the way you do this, you won't have any issues with getting that wing on. You want to go to the other side so they can see what's going on? Yeah. fighting now. Is there not enough clearance there? I think you're going to have to put them side by side. I was already trying that. It didn't really mm -hmm. like going for some reason. You see the overall width is just a little bit wider. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. We'll just force it in there. So now we have this excess wire here and I don't want this excess wire to interfere and I don't want to pinch these in one of those pinch points. Okay. Because once you tighten this, that's gonna to need to pinch into the foam then. So obviously the best course of action is figure out how to get this in here. Even though it's tight, you can do it. Yep, there it goes. So I'm gonna get one of them in there. Camera crew, hold that please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, hon. Now I'm pulling and it's just not wanting to go. I feel like I'm bound up on something. And I think it's this other side. Yep, that's yeah, where I'm bound up. Okay, keep holding. Mm -hmm. Don't let go unless I ask you to, please. Yep. Uh, Cause you won't know when I'm ready, I don't think. All right, so I'm gonna push that board. Then this one's gonna go. Ooh, yeah, we're getting there. Now I can also grab from right here too. Cause here in a minute, we're gonna have to, see what's going on there? See what I'm talking about, guys? So once you get that through, gosh, that's like harder than I expected it might be. Sometimes we fight with tails though. Okay, I'm gonna grab the other wire, pull that back through. I definitely do not want that to come undone though. So you gotta be real careful that you don't put yourself in a predicament. And by the way, when I grab with this, see, you feel this? Mm -hmm. I'm not hurting you. No. But I could also cut this wire in half by clamping it. Right. Okay, so you need to use, your, use some finesse if you're using these on your wires. Otherwise you will break your wires. Finally, it feels like it's going. Well, that was surprisingly hard. Okay. I mean, not a huge deal or anything, but you know how it is here on Brian Phillips RC. We bring you the highs and the lows because this plane, if that's the worst problem we have, that is an amazingly simple problem to resolve. And we're gonna be done with it in about 30 more seconds. And then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay. I shouldn't have lifted that, that was dumb. That was really dumb because now I gotta fight that. Hey, what are you doing? You can let go of that okay. now. Cause I'm gonna slide this in. Now that I have access to these tails, I'm gonna just pull this through as I advance the tail in. Oh yeah, we're gonna have no problems now. Okay, beautiful. You see what's going on there? See, I just pulled the slack. Mm -hmm. Nice, so all the slack is out of the way. So now I just gotta work that through the fuse. Uh, okay, this might be a little bit trickier than I was hoping because there is in fact a long Y cable. So I got one that's kind of trapped and I got the other one should be good to pull back. That's the one that I need to get pulled back. These are the steps that if you just do this now, you'll have less trouble later. So just do it now while it's easy, while there's not grass all over it and all that junk. Perfect. That other one feels like it's bound up. I think it got kicked at an angle. I'm just gonna walk this down in here. Okay, so that wasn't too terrible. It wasn't, wasn't the easiest thing. I was hoping it would have gone a little bit smoother, but I can live with it. All right, so now we have to screw in the tail, the horizontal stabilizer. If you wanna go to the front of that, mm -hmm. we're gonna do three screws here. I can't help but feel like it's not seated all the way. What do you think? Is it not seated all the way? There it goes. There it goes. Now it's dropped down. Yeah. And you can see because there's actually alignment. Show them the alignment in the hole there. If you look straight down, you can see. 
See what I'm talking oh, about yep. there, guys? Mm -hmm. So then once you're aligned, you just drop the screws in. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. If you're taking this plane apart, you're probably not gonna take the tail off. Most people don't take the tail feathers off when they're transporting. But if you have to pack it back in the box, which is, you know, some people do that, then that would be one way you could really get space efficient with this thing. There's a lot of threads on there too, by the way. Like that's a, that's a lot of threads, oh my goodness. But it's walking it down and you see the pucker at the first sign of puckering, that's usually about where I'm done tightening. Okay, so I'm just looking for puckering around the edges, usually on the corners is where you first see it. I wanna see flush here and I wanna see puckering on the corners. But there are a lot of threads. Kind of feels like I'm not, oh, I wasn't even biting. Sorry folks, there we go. See the puckering has already started. I think it's gotta go more. Ooh, that's kinda mm. ugly. All right, so one more screw on the horizontal stabilizer and elevator assembly. Ooh, that tape, look. I don't like that, mm. that's peeling up. Mm -hmm. You have to drop some clear tape over that so it doesn't pop up anymore when we're flying at like 100 plus miles an hour. Okay, so that's on, that's on. Now, the rudder's the next cable we're gonna have to fight, so I am not looking forward to this exact step. Um, one thing too is that it's pretty obvious this is the rudder. You could technically cut that off and get it out of your way. I'm just gonna go color for color. So orange is toward you guys, brown is toward me this time. Okay, verifying that again. Then I'm just gonna set this down here and just push that into the hole. Now this is such a small cable, I can just loop that around. See how it's looping around until it's all into the cavity. And then I'm just gonna tuck that down. Notice that this is plastic here, that's really nice. Plastic back here, that's super nice. I don't know if that's a V2 thing, V3 thing, but I can definitely tell you that's a nice fit. Mm -hmm. Nice fit and finish. It looks like we're gonna end up with some spare screws here too, unless I've forgotten something, that would be a travesty. Because I end up with uh, one extra. Yep, one extra is what we're used to. Oh yeah, look how clean those joints are. I did wiggle that so that the tip would drop down in. Mm, I would like to see that countersink in there better. Not a big deal, but it seems like a lot of machining and they would just machine it a little deeper, you'd get a better better profile there. See what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That head is so big on that screw. But there again, you know, form over function or function over form. We prefer function over form, generally. Although to be honest, our planes are getting so beautiful. Okay, so we actually ended up with two extras. Did we not put the screws in both sides of the wings? We did, right? We did. Okay, yep. well then we've got this. Uh, two extras. I don't know why they gave us two extras. It's a little bit unusual that we would get two extras like mm -hmm. that. It does make me second guess myself just from the simple fact that we generally only get one extra of the same size. Unless they use that same particular uh, screw to hold the EDF fan on the EDF. So sometimes they'll give us one for that too. That might have been what happened here. Okay, so just to be clear, technically this plane is built. And what a looker that thing is. Amazing. Love the lines on this plane. It feels really nice and balanced. I'm super excited to see this thing fly. It's gonna be fast and it's gonna be furious, but it's also gonna slow down and be gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick second, get our radio out and we'll reset and come right back. All right, so we're gonna do the radio setup now on the Futura, but as usual, I have forgotten to mark the CG. Uh, the CG markings are gonna be, you know, always generally important on aircraft. I'm gonna use a red marker. Uh, you could use a black marker, it doesn't really matter. Uh, for this exercise, you can do a million different ways and they're all gonna work. Camera crew has already looked up. What did you look up? 100 to 105 millimeters. 100 to 105, edge. that's a pretty tight range on a big plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not that big though. So we're gonna zero that. 100 to 105. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just set this up to 
100 to 105, so I'll just set it to 100, and then that's from the leading edge. Let's show them in the manual where you found that because I want to verify this. Mm -hmm. Oops, I'll just pass the English. This is the reflex setup, by the way. It's an addendum. Oh, yes. Right okay, there. so you're measuring from the inboard most portion of the wing, and you're gonna go back like this. Okay, now that does make for a little bit of a challenging measurement when you're talking about a, a wing that goes back like this, okay? So what, what you can do is there's a million different ways to skin this cat, but I'm just gonna go ahead and mark right here. I'm gonna use my eyeball to line up right here, and then I made a little a dent, okay? So you could mark this with black, you can mark it with red, you can mark it with whatever. That's the first mark. We're gonna actually mark both sides. Same thing, I'm just literally gonna hold the calipers I'm gonna sight like this. I'm gonna sight down and I'm gonna look at this edge. And you have to, it's, it's not like a curved measurement. You don't lay a tape measure down. You actually measure like an invisible line. You're with the length of the plane and I'm just getting lined up with all this. And you can tell approximately where that is from where the plastic is. And all I can say is, That seems so far from what this one is. Or is that just in my head? Okay, so there's the mark at 100. Then I'm gonna go out to 105. Okay, good enough, 104.97 millimeters. Probably close enough. Good lordy lord, that is like barely any adjustment. That doesn't even seem like enough to mark. Mm -mm. I just almost feel like I'm, nope, I'm not missing anything. That is a very tight measurement. They definitely want that CG just right there in this range here, guys. Five millimeters, that's about right, I guess. Now, some of you are probably thinking, I can't believe you mark your planes like that. I, I get it. But I have had very good luck doing this. <clears throat> I used to do it a number of different ways. <clears throat> There was a time when I would lay down a piece of tape and I would use CA and I'd make a drip of CA. There was a time I would do the same except with hot glue. Um, both of those I've migrated away from because it's just not that much better. And then later, if you ever lose a piece of tape then you've lost your CG marking and you have to redo it. Of course, it's not like the end of the world, but I don't like doing that twice. The other thing is this canopy is a little bit slick. So you may want to put a piece of tape on there. Now, what we like to do is we like to write down what battery is. 6S, 4,000 milliamp hour. And then there, whoops. What I'm going to do is I'll have an arrow one way or the other. So I'm assuming I'm going to put the lead this way. And then I'm assuming we're going to want it back as far as possible. Now we could go back and figure out where we actually did this on the other plane, on the other model, the V2. But I'm going to do the normal shelf liner trick which is super handy for holding the battery in. I don't like Velcro. I'm a big um, proponent of no Velcro. I like bareback. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't translate well. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're going to, <laughs> I just thought of a joke that was totally inappropriate. I'm not even gonna say it. It was something about the children, speaking of the children. <laughs> Well, forget, you can tell me later. Uh, okay, so anyway, so we're gonna cut that right there. All right, as you can see, pretty simple. Now, yes, some of the adhesive from this is gonna come out on the battery and make a little bit of a mess of it, but it's a lot better than having Velcro on there, in my opinion. And yes, we do have high quality, high quality straps, the kind that you can yank on and break your wood with. That is one of the disadvantages to the strong straps. If you have weak straps, it's less likely to break the wood mounting plate. But you know what? If you're gonna give up somewhere, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good adjustment. Okay, all right, so without further ado, we have to start radio setup again. Now radio setup on this plane is pretty straightforward. Um, I don't remember having any problems at all when we did our first V2, but since this is V3, and we're using actually an older receiver. I just wanna let you guys know that the older receiver is just a simple basic receiver without any bells and whistles. 
and that's what you're gonna want. Now, I'm gonna go over what you would choose or what you could choose if you wanted to pull out the reflex or say you get it without a reflex or you just don't like the idea of using reflex, you'd like to stick with a, you know, safe and AS3X as opposed to using the reflex for auto leveling and or stabiliz stabilization on or off. Okay, so 631, I forgot to mention the AR620. Now, why would I not say 620? Because this thing is gonna leave you hanging because you need that seventh channel, okay? Because you're gonna have throttle, elevator, rudder, ailerons, flaps, landing gear, and then you need the seventh channel for status for mode, okay? So because you need seven channels, you can't use an AR620. But Brian, what about the 631? You need more than six channels for that. Yes, that's right, but this has more than six channels. 631 or 630 would be perfectly capable of flying this plane. You'd have AS3X safe, and you could turn off stabilization if you want no stabilizer as well in this configuration. But this is a little bit more expensive. So if you want, Full range telemetry, you can go up the AR637T. No, you don't need the AR8360T unless you wanna split up control surfaces and do weird things. I don't really think you would need to do that, but if you wanted to do like Crow or something crazy, you could do this with the, 82, uh, the 8360T. You would pull out the reflex and then you'd be able to do everything through forward programming. This would be a nice option. I, on the other hand, am gonna be a cheapskate and use my old a AR8000, which by the way was expensive in its heyday. I just never had a plane that I wanted it in because I needed a stabilizer and I didn't have the part to pair this up with uh, you know, some third party uh, stabilizer. So here we are today doing it. Obviously this is not spatially dependent. It doesn't care where it's located because it is not a stabilized receiver. It doesn't matter. So in that case, what I'm gonna do is, and a little, little trick, if you're trying to figure out the model numbers on spectrum receivers, the ones that have uh, AS3X and SAFE have like an extra number, like an odd number in there, 8360, 8360T, okay? So the one that has no AS3X is an 8220 T. So make sense of that if you wish. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And yes, I do need to use a bind plug on this. So that's always exciting. Now, because we don't have a stabilizer on this one, but we have the reflex, the reflex is already mounted for us. We don't need to mess with it. So all I need to do is just find a spot that's convenient, stick this in here so that we can reach all our wires. So I'm gonna just go ahead and plug these in now. Oh, look, they're even labeled, that's super nice. Okay, so S bus mode. So that's probably gonna be like auxiliary two, I would imagine. Now where's signal? I, it's been so long since I used one of these. It looks like signal, the ambiguous mark of the day. You need to go back just a little bit, you're blocking, there you go. So the minus is up, I guess, I don't know, I can't tell. Which way? Oh, you gotta look at the key on these ones, that's right, they're keyed. So I'm going into auxiliary two, and if it doesn't fit, then that means I got it backward. Yep, see that fits. So the, the negative is up, which kinda makes sense, but why not put the, because they don't have a decal there, that's why. Mm -hmm. All right, so the mode is gonna be on auxiliary two in my case, then this one is rudder. Okay, so rudder is gonna be plugged into the one that says rudder, that's always handy. Okay, so there's rudder, and I need negative up, so I'm just being mindful of my cable management here as I do this, and what I mean by that is I'm just making sure that my negative is going up, and also they're in line so I don't have a bunch of unnecessary twists here. I don't know if you guys are picking up on that. Okay, so this is the elevator, oh, throttle. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just make sure as that comes out of the receiver, we don't have a bunch of unnecessary twists because I like to have it nice and clean when it's all said and done. Okay, then we have elevator. Elevators going here. Of course, some of these things I say in these unbox build radio setup um, are strictly my opinion. You don't have to ascribe to the same things that I ascribe to. We can all agree to disagree on certain things. It doesn't make a big difference. Okay, ailerons. And there's plenty of room to disagree within the hobby. We don't all have to agree on exactly the same stuff. Preference issues are totally welcome here. Believe me, if you've ever been to a flying field, You'll know that. Okay, so now we have all these wires back here and you're like, well, which one's flaps and retracts? Well, the gear are right here 
and I'm just trying to do my due diligence so I don't have a big tangled mess when I go to plug in my batteries. So I'm going to untangle my main lead. I mean, it's kind of a crapshoot if that's better above or below. I think I'm going to put it above. Okay. Now, for the record, if you were using this particular receiver, this, the 637T, then you'd be plugging these black wires and red wire. You could either pull this connector apart, re-solder onto there and there, or you could do it the easy way where you take and pierce the lines, like something like here and here, and then you just slide it in, tape over it. We've done it a bunch of times. We have never had a problem with our telemetry as a result. We keep recommending to do it that way because it's just so dang easy. So plus, nobody likes taking apart EC5s. They are terrible. They are terrible to take apart. They're also terrible connectors. I hate them. The IC5s are amazing. Um, yes, they are compatible with the IC5, which is nice, but they are one of the hardest connectors to plug in, in my opinion. Hands down, bar none. I hate using them. Okay, moving on to the next thing. See, people, we're critical of things that we review on this channel occasionally. Now, yes, I did realize that is like the least important thing on this entire plane, and I don't mind being critical of that, but at the same time, we're critical of what needs to be critical because when things come up, like decals that are peeling on our horizontal stabilizer, we want you to be aware that it's possible you may experience the same thing. Also keep in mind that sometimes our early samples experience a little bit tougher life than the ones that you're buying um, and ordering online from our links in the video description below, which by the way, if you haven't ordered yours, get it from the links in the video description below. You're working with us when you do that. We're making small commissions from the companies that we work with and that does help to fund our channel. And these long format videos, make no mistake, do hurt our standing on YouTube. So it is kind of a miracle that we have such an amazing following because you guys evidently like watching the long format and you have rejected the one minute whatever crap that YouTube wants us to do. <laughs> so yes, that's right, that's just crap. Little one minute clips. What can you get done in one minute? Well, well a lot. I mean on YouTube. <laughs> Just not on Brian Phillips RC. We don't get nothing done in one minute. No, we don't. Okay, so as you can see, we have a nice little bundle of wires. Everything should be configured properly, but before we get too excited about mounting everything, I just want to kind of take a second and sorry about that camera crew. Mm -hmm. I want to grab my forceps. Where the heck are my forceps? Here they are. So I'm going to grab these forceps. She's going to trade me spots. We're just going to look at this. Okay. So you see that red wire? I think that must be where the LEDs take off from everything. I don't like that these wires are up here. I'm trying to figure out the best way to manage that. Can you think of a great way? Not really. I think it's just going to be there. I think it's going to be there. I'm going to grow to love it. No matter how terrible it is. I, I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to the wires that might get in the way of plugging a battery in. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking inside of the cabin of your airplane and you think, boy, that's disgusting, all those extra wires, just think, at least it's not a Viper. Because the Vipers are terrible, especially in the 70s. Okay, so before we stick that down, let's go ahead and energize this thing. So in order to energize this thing in an effective manner, what we need to do is we need to actually now take a moment and set up the transmitter. This is an easy part of the process. We have the book here. The book isn't going to tell us much. We don't even need to hook up a single one control horn. You may not have noticed, oh, but I certainly did. Awesome. Also, the reflex has information here. You can read this side if you're into Chinese. Also, if you've never done it, open up your phone. If you're using Android, I don't know how this works on, on iPhone but you'll open up a uh, Google search, type in the word translate, click on the camera and you can highlight these words will literally be translated in English vernacular, including swear words. It is hilarious. Why, why do you know that? Um, never mind. So yes, the Chinese will literally show up on your screen and will move with the page and they will have a similar backdrop. It's very cool. Incredibly powerful tool. And then yes, you can make it say things in other languages against its will, which is super fun. So I would encourage you to try that at your earliest convenience. <laughs> There's no links for that, by the way. Okay, so you're welcome, Google. I know you're listening anyway. 
Winning lotto numbers. Winning lotto numbers. <laughs> ah! Look at that. Literally the last one we were using was the yeah. Futura. That's awesome. Okay, throttle holds on as a safety measure and for good practice. Back and cancel takes you there, but I'm gonna click and scroll down. System setup, disconnect RF model type. I'm just gonna go down to the newest model. We're just checking out our countertop. Yep, really well, pretty. you could show them the manual while we wait. Okay, add new model. Okay, I'm gonna create an acro. You could create something different if you want. I'm gonna create an acro. How do you know that's an acro, Brian? Because I've done this a few times. Mm -hmm. That's an acro. Now, it is thinking hard. It's like, how can I please Brian today? by going back to this menu. Amazing, autonomous. Okay, so model type. If you change that, it's gonna reset everything you've done. You need to get a little better angle for the people, I think. Okay, model name. This is where, oh, 112, good Lord. So this is where we're gonna type the name. Show them the name. It's right there. So we're gonna type in Futura. So F, U, what? All right, guys, so we've got the model number in there. Uh, just to be clear, the model name. Uh, this is a legacy keyboard. We like the legacy keyboard. Okay, this is the wing type, so we're gonna set it up for one either on one flap and a normal tail. And then I like to change this image to more closely match what airplane we're setting up. So I guess we'll put it on the Habu looking thing. Flight mode setup, I don't think we need to set up flight mode, but just so you guys know, if you want a flight mode attached to, for instance, this switch, you can actually make your trims attached to each flight mode. So in auto leveling, you can have trim. In no stabilization, you can have trim. That's auto leveling in my case is what I'm gonna set it to. You can do trim that's totally separate, and then when the stabilizer's on, the trim can be separate. Does that make sense? So trim, 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 three different trims. That is not something we have done in the past. I've only done it like once off camera on a flapper on equipped plane because there was a significant trim differential on a full length op hobbies, uh, what was that? Full the length op hobbies challenger? challenger, yep. Which flies great. Okay, so spoken flight mode, we're not gonna mess with. Channel assign, Looks like we're gonna have aux one is gonna be spoken for with flaps and then uh, B, which would normally be flaps is actually going to be assigned to D in this case because I want D to control our stabilizer function. Now, I don't know if we can also do a master gain on the right knob, that'd be really nice if we could. But in this case, I just need to be able to turn on and off the stabilizer at minimum, okay? So that's what we're gonna do for now. Also, there are times with some stabilizers, there is a master gain function to the absolute pulse width modulation position of the output. So sometimes the range between plus 150, zero and minus 150 or vice versa will indicate the gain. So what you can do is you can still have this turn on stabilizer, off stabilizer and on auto leveling, but you can set your gains to be a proportional output of what this switch is, or in this case, it's a knob, and it's going to be subjected to the change of state with this mix, okay? So that's, that's something you can do. You don't have to do that. I used to do that all the time on Lemon RX receivers because I basically always had it on. I never turned it off with channel five, but what I did was I used channel eight for master gain. So it was master gain off on whatever based on a switch condition, but that was just a mix that tied to the same channel. The problem is on the Lemon RX is you gave up channel five for on and off. And then also again, channel eight, which was where you hooked up to your buying plug, by the way, on the seven channel with stabilizers. So that was always a big bummer. That is one of the big advantages to the spectrum stuff with forward programming is because you get those additional channels that are beyond that. So if you have an NX10 and you get that 8230 or whatever it is, 80 to show them the top one. This one, yep. When you get that, you actually can control 10 discrete channels. And then there's actually more included for the telemetry. So anyway, okay. Anyway, sorry, I don't mean to go over your head if you're a new pilot, but let's be honest, this is probably not a first plane. 
Uh, it's not a first EDF either. You could technically do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Mm. This is a capable, very wide uh, flight envelope, versatile, extremely fast, extremely well controlled, no bad habits type of plane that you want to have in your hangar, but it is not for the faint of heart in that it is still a fast flying jet. You can slow it down with flaps and you can land it um, relatively easy. But it is the type of plane that when you slow down to a point, it's gonna hit the ground hard and then you'll break stuff. Not that I've ever done that last time I flew. I had it fixed in 10 minutes. It was a Brian Phillips 10 minutes though. <laughs> right. Okay, so we're ready to plug this in. Oh no, we need to set up like lots more flaps and stuff. Let's look at this. Okay, so we're into the regular uh, function list now. So we're gonna do the most important safety thing. We're gonna do throttle cut on switch H. Okay, so as you can see, the throttle's not moving there. And then when I turn off the throttle cut, it moves down here in the little monitor. Throttle cut's back on. Flap system, we're gonna make that attached to switch B. And we're gonna make uh, just an arbitrary correction of six and eight. And we're gonna do like a minus and a plus, and if we're wrong, we'll just flip it. So not a big deal. I just want it to move and we'll actually set it to the middle to be on the safe side when we first fire up. Okay, so when I move with the switch, it changes the condition. And I'm gonna set my, sweet, my speed to about two seconds here. Okay. Then, if you're gonna do weird mixing, you could do mixing in here, I'm not gonna mess with that. Timer, I have no idea what the timer is gonna be. We do not have battery pack telemetry, so I'm gonna actually set this down to like about three. Uh, three minutes, I'm gonna activate the one out. So anything over 25% is gonna start the timer. It's probably working in the background. And then I'm gonna give myself, instead of, um, I'm gonna do a verbal at 30. I'm gonna do a countdown at 10. So it'll say 30 seconds remaining. 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Are you crashing in the middle? Or? No, that's the noise voice and vibrate. Sorry, if you guys don't get it, you, you won't get it. That's all right. Tone and vibrate at expiration. And I don't want voice and vibrate, I just want voice. Okay. So that is a little bit of a departure from our standard. Okay, so timer's cleared. Now we need to set up dual rates and expo. Dual rates and expo is less critical with stabilizer, but we fly with stabilizer all the time. And so we're gonna set it up just like we would if we had AS3X. In this case, we don't have AS3X, we have the reflex. So I'm just gonna go about double and about half. And then I'm gonna lower the rates in the about half, or double rather. Yes, I assigned them all to the same switch. That's on purpose. I don't like having a million switches that I have to get to. But if you wanted to, you could separate them. I just want you guys to remember one thing. When you're flying, there is such a thing as pilot fatigue. I've had people ask me that a few times in the last few weeks. Pilot fatigue meaning that you're flying and you just like can't keep track of all the crap that you need to keep track of, especially when you're new or newer. It's always important to try to keep things as simple as possible. One of the biggest things you can do is set up every transmitter profile exactly the same or at least the same for a couple of different variety of different planes. Okay, so we're gonna start in the middle. If we need less, we'll go up. If we need more, we'll go down. This doubles and then reduces our rates. This leaves it at the normal takeoff setting, and this halves the rates. Now, if I find that I need more, I'll make my adjustment up or down. Then when I land, I'll make that my new middle, and then I'll double it and half it, okay? All right, so we're pretty much done on that. So if we go to monitor mode, we can see the flaps, we can see the elevator correction, we can see the elevator, ailerons, all that stuff. It's all working, which is pretty cool. We're putting the flaps in the central position, which is unusual, but just because this is a plug and fly, I don't want to overdrive servos. Throttle cut is on, and we're pretty much ready to bind. So I'm just going to go down to this menu. Now you can also do it by turning off the machine, pressing and holding the I switch as you're powering it up. I'm just going to choose to do this. I don't like how slow this is, or excuse me, how fast it times out but it's gonna time out quicker than I can probably get this done. And then we'll go ahead and mount it because it's not positionally dependent. It really doesn't matter where we mount it. So I can do this at any time from outside, okay? So I could just hear it timed out of that screen. Super annoying, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over because it's wrong. Okay, cool, so we're good there. Now I'm just gonna lay this in here loose, plugging it in. 
Okay, I can see the bind. See the bind flashing? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go back into the bind mode. Now we need to be mindful of gear. Mm. Are we gonna hit our gear? Yes, we would. So I'm gonna move this forward quite a bit. That's gonna protect the landing gear if they open, okay? So now I gotta go back into it. You see what I'm talking about? That is one annoying function. And it bound, okay? So our flaps, we got backward, no big deal. Throttle cuts on, that was one dance, two dances. I don't understand what the significance of the second dance is, but I believe it has something to do with the satellite receiver when you're dealing with the old AR8000. So I'm not gonna investigate because I don't care. It's just something that we used to have and now we don't, so I'm not really super worried about it. I just know that it's gonna be good full range pulse width modulation. Okay, now, first thing I do when I'm setting up a plane after I've got all that stuff done is I start looking at control surface direction. Okay, so elevator up, good. Elevator down, good. Roll left, wrong. Roll right, wrong. First thing I'm gonna do is go to travel. Click over to reverse, ailerons. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. I can already tell I'm in an auto leveling configuration because there's not much play on these servos. Y'all left, y'all right, also gear. Oh yeah, buddy, show them the nose gear. Is there a light on it? Look how bright that, that light is, by that the way. underneath one is really bright. No nose gear, white. Oh wow, those LEDs flash on the left and right, are, they're out of sequence too. Okay, very cool. I am going to change this. This is a bright light. I like the bright light. I hate the fact that it's flashing. I don't want flashing lights. As far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't mind if the bottom light was flashing. I like them all solid. I'm gonna see if there's a way to do that. I don't know, and that's why they had more wires. It looks like we should be able to switch that around. I'm just not sure what wire I gotta switch out. So it's possible all I gotta do is Y off of where the, uh, the white light is getting its power. So we'll figure that out here in a minute. But for now, let's finish what we're doing. Rudder left, rudder right. Stick to cheerable, steerable. Going left, going right. That's all correct. Okay, so everything is reversed correctly except for the flap system. We got this wrong, so there's two ways to do that. We can change these numbers. Actually, we didn't get it wrong. That's all the way down. That'd be takeoff, and then that'd be just normal flight mode. Now, because this is an FMS, we have different end spots on the servo setup. So under travel, you're gonna go down to flaps. You'll note that it goes up or down based on where you are. So all the way up, you notice how it's not parked all the way. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'm gonna scroll up and look at the servo close. See how it's lined up now? Usually it's about 125 for uh, FMS models, but it looks like we need to go just a little bit more. So that's a lot more than I want for takeoff, and that's pretty dang good for landing, but watch this. Nope, nope, keep watching the flap. Oh, okay. I can go even more and really barn door that thing. That's crazy. So I'm gonna go to 125 up, and I'm just gonna, for good measure, show the people the screen here now. I'm gonna go to 125 down, up and down. Okay. So takeoff flaps we're gonna set next. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go just a little bit more up. Let's go to like 130. See how it's lined up perfect now? 150, that's all the way up. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Okay, so now let's go and make our adjustment in the flap menu. Flap system. I want this to still be somewhat of a negative number. Let's call it like uh, minus 50. Now let's show the people what that looks like. Take off flaps, that's not enough. I want more than that. So normal flight, takeoff flaps, landing barn doors. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's minus 100, minus 50, and then plus 100. Okay, now the elevator correction is going in the right direction where the elevator's going down because what happens on an inboard, inboard flap, of course, you're gonna have a ballooning effect when you put the, the flaps out given the same otherwise circumstances. If you're going in a flat level line with the same speed, you deploy the flaps. It's gonna make you point up, and then that balloon is gonna be countered by the elevator correction, which helps you to slow the plane down. Also, once you're flying, you can fly with a nose down attitude without gaining altitude, or excuse me, without 
gaining speed as you lose altitude. It also helps the pilot to be able to see over the nose of the plane. In this case, you're not the pilot, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, very cool. Okay, so we have roll left. I wanna double check something. Let's show the people over my shoulder here as I do this. Okay, so I'm gonna walk out of the flat menu. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. Y'all left, y'all right. Just move the controller. Don't be afraid to look like a complete idiot doing this because you're gonna look like an idiot if you get those wrong and you crash like this, because I've done it several times in my career and I know you will too. So don't do that. Don't be like me. All right, so the next step is I gotta figure out those lights. So let's go ahead and come over here. Let's get the four steps out and see if we can find how to switch these lights from a flash if we can. So go ahead and turn your light on on the camera. Let's show the people back inside of the belly of the beast. Okay, so I see there's one plug here. That says gear, okay, and I don't see, uh, that's a Y splitter, that's probably gonna be for, oh, I see some ele elevator. Ooh, look at that, watch this. I bet this is the lights, okay? Watch the lights, they just went off. The white light just went off, okay? Yep. So you see this, guys? That thing's unplugged. That was our LED light for the white light on the bottom. Now let's keep digging a little bit more. And I see that there's two more controls. There's one for rudder, there's one for elevator, and there's one for rudder. So that's the breakout board that actually controls the steerable nose gear. So it splits out, it goes through the breakout board for that. Now, what that tells me is that these LEDs are controlled somewhere else, unfortunately. And I think I know what it is. If you come over here, you can see. Right here, we have channel eight. Oh, these are the other channels. You see that? That's where they would drop those out. So this is what goes out to the wing. So in order to change that from a flashing light, you'd have to do some pretty significant surgery, i.e. I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna try to plug this back in and you're probably thinking to yourself, camera crew, you should Pause and rewind, except that's a huge pain in the butt, so we're not gonna do that. I but am now going- the people know. Huh? But now the people know. But now the people at home know, that's true. That's why we do things like that. It it's like not an just to- long tangent. Drive you guys nuts. It's to help you to answer the unanswerable questions that are answerable. Um, do you you know, if you would go like this, I could actually possibly see. Uh -huh, I can't see. Okay. okay, shut that light off. Blinding blinding me okay so we're gonna just try to get this plug back in and it's just really kind of tough to see so i might fight with that real quick or is it on nope not yet oh it's flat there it is it's on it's on i thought i saw it flashing mm -hmm. okay so just so you guys know the only light that's plugged in as a simple light would be that light okay not a big problem but it is something that you need to be aware of I don't like flashing nav lights. I think it's a cool feature, but I wanna be able to turn it on and off. So maybe that is actually subject to stabilization mode. I don't see any hesitation in the light condition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at the uh, stabilizer setting now. So the stabilizer Stabilizer off and auto leveling are three different settings. We assigned that by where we plugged it in. So it's auxiliary two, okay? So watch the elevator all the way up. That's out of auto leveling and also out of auto leveling. Now, how do you distinguish between that? You can do this two ways. More throw means you're out of auto leveling and also if the thing tries to respond by auto leveling, you'll know. So let's take a second and we're gonna stick this receiver in now that we have established all the different things we need to establish. And so I'm just using some double-sided tape here. You don't need this foam style. It just happens to be that's what I'm using. So I'm gonna go ahead and plop this on here real quick. That's just gonna give us something to mount this with. Again, this is um, an older style of receiver, but it just happened to be in the surplus of millions and millions of different receivers and different things that I have lying around that I paid good money for years ago and I want to use up. 
And I'm sure you guys all have stuff like that once in a while. These are backing tape from Lemon RX. And if anybody has ever used that backing tape from Lemon RX, it is like one of the hardest backing tape to get pulled off. And I don't understand why that is. So if you guys have ever had problems doing that, you'll understand why, because it's not just you, it is definitely them. <laughs> yeah, one of the tougher ones to un undo. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this just to kind of get these wires out of the way. I'm gonna give this a couple of twists, maybe one, maybe two, not sure. Trying to be mindful of those antennae, I wanna be nice to them. Um, I had somebody telling me the correct vernacular for antennas the other day. Do you remember which, like they said, no, it's not antennae. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it is antennae. But he's know. like, no, antennae if it's an animal. Oh, that might be true. It's different for It's different for antennas. Versus See this? So I'm just pressing that. Again, doesn't matter spatially. It does not care about its position in this case because that is not a stabilized receiver. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna be a smart feller and try to take this off, except it's gonna give me trouble, so I'll just take the easy one off. This cardboard-backed one is always super easy. So I never did understand why is it so easy to do the one and not the other, okay? And then I'm gonna just be a smart feller instead of a fart smeller, and I'm gonna do it this way. So I'm just taking that and just pulling it back. You see how I just pierced through it? So I actually did not get the backing. I got the backing and some of the adhesive. In case you guys weren't paying attention close to that. So then this satellite receiver, I don't know. It's a diversity antenna. So I've already got one going this way and it's kind of folded. So I'd like to be 90 degrees of that. But I want to keep freed up for where I'm going to put my other uh, functional parts. I guess at an angle is okay. It's not perfect, but I could do worse. Okay, remember diversity antennas, 90 degrees of each other, 90 degrees of each other. Not 90 degrees, that's the same. That would be uh, parallel, and this would be perpendicular. So you want perpendicular, okay? So I tried to get all three angles. Now, you can also introduce other you know, angles in the middle, that's fine. But just don't keep them all in the same row, because they will be weak then. You will pick up the same crosstalk, and you're basically defeating the other antenna if you have them in a parallel condition. But you might need that if you've got a carbon fiber body on your, your aircraft and you might just need to reach out where there's not carbon fiber. Okay, so I've got the wires kind of pushed back. So now I can go ahead and open the straps. Now, why are we putting this battery in? Why do we care? Because I need to flip the plane over to talk about the auto leveling feature and how you can validate whether it's working right. We can also check the CG now. And you see how nice that is. You got tons of room in there. Yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't get a 5,000 in there. I just don't know if the CG is gonna work out as good as I'd like. I am all the way back to the bundle of wires that comes out of the vector. Excuse me, not the vector, but the reflex mm -hmm. in this case. Now, I can also turn my battery in a side like that and I can put it at an angle. I'm not a big fan of angle, angling the batteries if it's not necessary, okay? I will if it's necessary. I don't unless it's necessary. I have done it if it's necessary. Which plane was that the other day? Oh, the Beaver, the FMS Beaver. Okay, so now you'll note that I don't have to like kill myself to get that super sturdy. Even with just one strap, I can control manipulate the entire plane, okay? That's because of our shelf liner. The shelf liner uh, makes almost like a sticky surface that hangs onto the battery. And then you don't have to go quite so crazy on this and watch, okay? Battery's not moving anywhere. And if you have that type of movement in your plane, you crashed. It'll Kay. only move that way once. Well, yeah, it'll only be once on a touch and go maybe that you, that you still successfully fly away from. Look at that, guys. I'm in, no modifications to the canopy. Nice. Version two, I did have to modify the canopy and it was a pretty significant amount mod of mod modifications to get everything to CG out right. I feel like we're probably we might almost have to move the battery forward on this plane uh, based on past experience with that. So, first things first, roll it on its belly. What happens to the ailerons? Tries to find the quickest route to level. And it is. Okay, cool. Now look at the elevator. Tries to find the quickest route to level. Let's 
See how it's doing the same thing? Nice bright light. Love it. Okay, so we have clearly established that we're in an auto leveling configuration or mode. So let's go ahead and change that mode so it's an appropriate position on our transmitter and then we'll know when we're going to fly what position we're in. So I don't want that to be the condition. I want this to be the condition for auto leveling. So how do we do that? Well, all we have to do is just rotate that servo and that was auxiliary two. Okay, so now this is auto leveling. See, not much movement, more movement, okay? So that's the other check and balance that you can do. So now, because this thing is super awesome, I'm going to try the throttle just a little bit to see if the stabilizer kicks on because I just want to point this out. I'm out of auto leveling. Rudder moves left, Mutter, rudder moves right. You need to come over here probably. Elevator moves up, elevator moves down. Aileron moves up, aileron moves down, aileron moves up, aileron moves down. I am looking at each of the control surfaces. So for this part of the video, I have to hold the camera. Camera crew. Okay, so I'm looking at the rudder. As I move this toward camera crew, it's gonna go toward her. See how it goes toward her, away from her. Toward her, away from her. Toward her, away from her. Okay, now elevator, watch. Elevator up, elevator down. Elevator up, elevator down, elevator up, elevator down. Trying to give you some different backdrops. Now, ailerons. Aileron up, aileron down. Aileron up, aileron down. This seems like a moot point because there's two of them and they're in a Y cable configuration. But you don't ever really know if the breakout board's working. Do yourself a favor and test it. Yep. It is not wasted time. In the center, nothing. That's what you want if you want the stabilizer off. Now, for those of you that don't want to be able to turn off the stabilizer, couple of thoughts. First of all, go to monitor mode. So scroll over once. Stabilizer is on. Stabilizer is off. Stabilizer is in auto leveling. So all you would have to do is you would go to your digital switch setup. Now I don't know why you would do this, but you could. Digital switch setup. You would select switch D and you would change your middle position to instead of reading zero, it would be minus 100. Then it would stay on stabilized all the time. So you would literally just scroll into this. You would change this to minus 100. Okay, stabilizer on. Stabilizer still on. I'm in the middle setting. You can hear it. Still on, auto leveling, okay? Now, how do you distinguish between auto leveling and stabilizer? First of all, I'm gonna turn that feature off because I do want to be able to turn off the stabilizer because it's just kind of cool to be able to do that if you want. This is gonna be a rock solid flying plane. You also note that I didn't have to give throttle in order for that to operate. So unlike AS3X, I believe it comes on right away, okay? I don't really think that's like a deal breaker one way or the other, it's just a feature, so I wanted to point that out. Okay, so the other thing is, let's talk about power. <laughs> I love doing this with planes. So, yeah. When it's possible, it's super, super fun. I love doing this, it's super fun, it doesn't always work, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, throttle cuts off. I just don't wanna bite the dust with this plane, so I'm gonna be a little bit careful how I conduct this test. So this test is gonna look a little something like they're so slick when they're new, guys. Okay, here we go. Not quite one to one, but pretty dang close. Okay. Also, that's deafening. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, you ready? Oh man. Okay, yep. Not full, just a little bit. See? It's just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, there you have it. So let's talk, let's let's take a look at landing gear before we call this quits on the unbox build radio setup. 
because obviously on the unbox build radio setup, some of you guys are here for the radio setup. Some of you guys are here for the build. Some of you are here for the unbox and then some of you are here for all of the above. Flaps, landing flaps, gear, amazing. Very cool. And then of course these oleos are very sturdy. Very simple gear door, okay? It's not another servo, there's nothing to fail. It's very simple. Um, yes, of course, you'll find a way to fail if you crash enough, but everything looks good, everything fits tight. I feel like they tightened up these, these doors, maybe look a little bit more detailed. They have a little cutout for the relief there. I think they were squared off before. Love the way it looks. Let's check the tires. They're rock hard, rock hard rock hard but they do spin really free now rock hard and spin free okay double fail on the landing gear um oleos huge victory on the landing gear and cnc aluminum retracts on all three which is really good good amount of steerability we love the trailing link oleos that is just amazing it's almost a must-have on most of these jets and edfs anymore um, the only thing I don't like is I would like to see a either semi pneumatic or soft tire because it just helps so much on greasy, beautiful landings and nothing feels better. Well, there's some things that feel better, but generally speaking, uh, nothing feels better than a greasy landing. Okay. And yes, that led looks sweet. So I'm very happy we have that forward facings ish led because on landing approach, it's going to look something sweet mm -hmm. when it's coming at you. Yeah. Um, disappointed by the flashing lights that's a bummer flashing lights are harder to see and they also are deceptive in terms of positional accuracy i don't want to have a gap in time when i don't know where the plane is i use leds on planes as a functional tool and not just for a cool looking detail i actually want to see solid leds on the main controls uh the the, the red and the green and then I really like having a white light too, but I'd prefer to see a white light on the tail. But this does seem appropriate on this plane. If this one was flashing, I'd be less inclined to be upset about that. These ones, it, I would have been happier to see them not flash. So, but that again, I'm very glad we have LEDs and they are very bright. Mm -hmm. So that's good. You can always tell when they're the nice LEDs because these LEDs have that same body to them. And also that becomes like an omnidirectional light because even from this side, you can see the green the red's gonna glow through the foam a little bit. So very happy with this plane. Cannot wait to see it in the air. It's gonna be an absolute dream to fly. I can already tell. Uh, complaints about the plane are very limited in this regard. I would say that the landing gear uh, tires could use a little bit softer tire. Um, and, and along the same lines, when you have a really loose, free spinning wheel, it's probably gonna carry forever on landing. So while you would think that having good bearings or free spinning wheels would be like a good thing, a net win, it actually turns into a net loss on these planes because they roll out forever as a result. Now, is that something that can't be overcome? Of course not. You could like put some dirt in that bearing and it would slow it down, also create heat. And so that's kind of your enemy too. But in my opinion, when it comes to landing gear, uh, semi-pneumatic tires or softer tires would also slow down those bearings because it just literally takes longer to rotate when you've got that squishy tire involved. So really happy with the plane. If that is the worst detail, uh, cosmetically, it looks amazing. Very happy with the way it turned out. Um, I definitely did notice a couple of peeling um, decals, not on this side, but on the other side. I would say that that is within the margin of, I don't really care as long as it doesn't rip off while I'm flying. If you get one that peels a whole lot more than that, I would highly recommend doing this little trick, which I'm gonna show you right now because it does work. It's not always necessary, but it does work if you're concerned. And that is to take a clear piece of tape. In this case, this has a little bit of a gloss finish to it. So I don't feel like I'm undermining the look of the plane. I'm gonna take and cut off tape on both sides so I have a nice clean edge and I'm gonna lay that down and I'm just gonna literally stick it down and then that won't have anywhere for air to get under. Okay, flat mat tape might work better on that, but I'm okay with it. And I'm gonna actually just do both for good measure because I do not wanna hear that thing buzzing when I'm going by at 140 miles an hour, however fast this goes. 
Our last one was fast. I don't know exactly how fast, but it felt pretty dang fast. Definitely, you know, like 100-ish miles an hour, I would say fast. is a safe bet. Yep. And this is not a small plane, even though it's only technically 800 millimeters. Or is this an 80, oh, maybe this is 1100 millimeters. I apologize guys if I said it was 800 millimeters because now that I say that, I'm second guessing myself. I think it's 1100. I might've been thinking of another plane. That should be on the first page. No, it's an 80 millimeter. I saw it on the box. Overall length, yeah, it's 1060. Guys, I stand corrected, my apologies. It's 1060 wide. And then what's the height, does it say? Mm, it does not. They generally don't. Yep. But that's what I was saying is that it ends up being tall. really tall mm -hmm. with this tall. Now the front end is big and the tail is tall, but you're talking about a deviation of, uh, let's call it 250 millimeters, 200 millimeters maybe, something like that. So here's a 400 millimeter Warbird for size comparison. So you're 375 millimeters tall, roughly. So that's, that's pretty amazing. I'm really happy with this plane. Um, it looks gorgeous. It's gonna run great. We do have a hard tip on the nose. That's nice. And it looks like that is a paint or that might be molded into the plastic. That's pretty sweet. Show the people that. That is not a decal. Oh. I can't tell if it's paint or what. Did they jig that up and paint the whole body at the same time? Maybe so, because it's very... It feels like it's yeah. melted in. Maybe it is just paint. Kind of hard to tell. Sorry guys, not trying to mislead here. But love the way this plane looks, love the V2. I am super excited to see this. We hope you guys will check out the video. If you haven't already seen the flight, obviously look in the playlist for this plane or for that matter, any plane that we've ever done. We have a playlist for it, even if it is the only video we've done. Generally speaking, there's two videos for most of the planes that we review. Uh, generally, we have an unbox build radio setup and then we have a maiden flight or we had an unbox build radio setup and maiden flights, which comes at the beginning of the video because everybody wants to see them fly, but not everybody wants to see the radio setup or the build or the unbox. So we do that because of popular demand. So when you guys ask for stuff, after you ask four or 5,000 times, we will get mics, <laughs> we promise. And then after the third or fourth set of mics, they will work pretty good. Hilarious. Which by the way, Rode Wireless 2. Yep. Good option if you have two subjects, yes. camera crew, my wife, and then myself, we both have a mic on. And then we use a USB-C to USB-C connector that goes into my wife's Galaxy S21 Ultra. Yep. And we do record on the onboard memory and then we offload to our computer for editing. Mm -hmm. And when I say editing, I mean concacting, Not that's all we do. Yes. So in the good old days, there was this really small sliver of time when we had an editor and we just decided that takes forever. Well, we do use it sometimes if we have long footage or... Long, if we have... Long. Well, I mean like like 21 hours of footage. 21 hours. Yeah, like those ones. Yes. The ones that are like 490 gigabytes. The, using the editor, since we don't actually edit, it just adds a lot to our production time, which is yep. already pretty excessive. And you lose fidelity. Time. Yes, it's very you hard to always keep the lose up. a little bit of fidelity. Yeah. And when I say fidelity, if we film at 60 frames per second, we may only publish in 50 frames per second then. But you have to use so much system resource to build something like that. And even on a discrete hard drive, you're going to spend literally half a day rendering a mm -hmm. video at 60 frames per second, 4K. So, and then we upload through Starlink, which is crazy because that means we're getting like 30, 60, 100 megabits per second on a good day down. On a really good day. And then like 20, 30 up on a good day. And that does not include all the little minor interruptions that you won't experience in town. And I'm talking about full on no signal for 15, 20 seconds. It doesn't seem like a big deal until you're replying to a comment and you type a long technical detailed response like I do all the time. And then you hit send and it goes to this like thinky thing. <laughs> and I'm like, are you kidding me? It's super frustrating guys. So if you guys ever, if you get a comment and you're like, man, it's taking them like a month to reply. Sometimes I've replied twice, <laughs> three times, four times, and you just don't know it. So that's the dedication you get here on Brian Phillips RC because I am obsessed with this stuff. And my wife is not, so that's why it's really cool and I'm very happy 
that she still tolerates all this <laughs> because she is not in love with these airplanes. She's just in love with yours truly. <laughs> so because of that, she tolerates the airplanes and the massive time investment that this channel calls for in our lives. But at the same time, we really do enjoy bringing you guys good quality content that is gonna get you up to speed. If you're coming back to the hobby, we want you in the hobby again. There's so much that you are missing. If you are you know, doing 1990s vintage aircraft and you're making that, that plunge to, to current, there is so much technology that's changed. You will be able to fly because your thumbs will remember the sticks, but you will be amazed how locked in. You will be amazed at how easy. You will be amazed at how reasonably inexpensive this technology has become. At the same time, if you're talking 2000s to early 2000s, there's still a huge technology jump. In fact, when we started this channel about seven and a half, eight years ago, the technology has vastly improved. Mm -hmm. So much more reliable, so much more, so many more aircraft are coming with Safe Select or a similar variant of auto leveling. Auto leveling has been like the keys to the RC flying experience for the inexperienced people out there. It helps take you when you could only go out and fly five or six times in a year, which is terrible. It pains me to think about somebody trying to do that, learning to fly. It would be terrible. Mm -hmm. You got to get yourself a small plane and fly it in the backyard because you need practice to get this skill down. It is not something that you can buy. Even though Safe, AS3X, Vector, Vortex, Reflex are all there to help, Eagle, Hobby Tree, whatever you want to go with, there's a million different choices for stabilizers, auto level flight controllers. And you're like, what was all that stuff you just rattled off, Brian? That's why you're here at Brian Phillips RC. We're going to take you from zero to hero in as quick a time as we can possibly get it. And at the end of the day, we're going to try to engineer us right back out of your life so that you can just go out and do what you do best, which is learn to use these things to their full potential and get the most out of the RC hobby. So when you come back next time, maybe it'll be to go through the radio setup two or three more times, maybe five or six or 10 times or a hundred times, depending on how slow of a learner you are. Or maybe you just enjoy listening to my wife make fun of stupid things I say. I don't know, whatever the case is, we appreciate you being here. And if you wanna return the favor, if we have provided you any uh, you know, improvement in your quality of life, buy these planes when you see how awesome they are from our links in the video description below. You pay no extra. You can use your coupon code, your hobby bucks, your you know, cash back on your credit card. I don't really care, checking the cash. Whatever it is, I don't care how you pay for it. The thing is, if you follow the links, then we'll get small commissions from the companies that we partner up with to bring this content to you. Now, yes, that means that they send us planes to review because we have done hundreds of them. I could never afford to do that many planes. We used to do it and it was very expensive. It was very painful. And my wife probably would have left me if I kept doing it at this level a long time ago. And then I would have had to film myself and that would have sucked. Yeah. So anyway, and that's just the filming part. So when we do reviews, the best thing you can do to support us financially is buy the planes when you want to see this plane in your own hands. Just buy from our links. Now, the second best thing you can do is watch the videos, like the videos, click the bell for notifications, and then obviously interact with us in the comments. We're one of the few channels that try desperately to keep up with comments as we've grown a little bit bigger. It's gotten harder, admittedly, and I admittedly get behind. I get behind because we're doing a lot of content for the channel. Now you may not realize that, but there might be six or seven videos waiting to publish. We have deadlines and things that we have to hit, and we want you guys to get this stuff as soon as you possibly can. But at the end of the day, we're trying to make this work. So we really appreciate you guys. Uh, if you wanna become a Patreon, that's the other way you can support us. That's a monthly support where you offer you know, a couple of bucks, whatever it is, just keep in mind, pretty high fees on Patreon. It's like between, let's call it 15 and 30%. So it can be pretty painful. If you just hate the idea of giving money to them, you can do PayPal, totally free, friends and family. And I think you can send those anywhere in the world. So, you know, if you're in UK or, you know, in, in New, New Zealand or something like that, which we have quite a few people um, in Australia and New Zealand that always look at these planes and they're like, why do you get those for 350 bucks and we have to spend 700 bucks I wish, I wish I could figure out a way to get logistics fixed. There are a lot of rules in New Zealand and Australia for bringing in lipos and bringing in large packages. So 
If you want to fix that, you need to petition your government to fix some of those screwed up rules. Just like we need to petition our government to fix screwed up rules like the FAA. <laughs> Overreaching. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that now. Let's just enjoy the best parts of this hobby and definitely enjoy this Futura version three. It looks awesome. I cannot wait to fly it. Obviously, you guys have already seen the flight footage because we try to release this maybe one minute before we release the Maiden, but everybody watches the Maiden first. So Maiden Flight's coming next. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, check the playlist. Also, Brian Phillips RC, www.brianphillipsrc, just exactly the same as YouTube, except it's our own website, that domain, is where you can go to get a little bit better layout of the planes because there are a lot of them and the YouTube search works sort of, but not really. For us as creators, it's easy for us to navigate all of it, but for you as a viewer, it's a little bit harder. Click on my face, the one that looks like a 16 year old version of myself <laughs> without a beard. Click on that. You can actually use the search this website or search this channel and you can search my name we try to do the same exact vernacular, Horizon Hobby, FMS, whatever company it is, we list that off. Then we list the name of the plane. We list the size of the plane. It's either sized by the EDF size, in this case, this is an 80 millimeter EDF, or it's sized by the wingspan generally, or it's sized by the car or the class or whatever vehicle we're doing. Or if it's PPG, then you're just gonna have to guess because I don't know what it's gonna be. But at the end of the day, we have everything organized in playlists and we have them organized in chronological order for you where possible. If we had big build with like 40, 50 videos, back in the day we had lists in our descriptions and we just can't do it anymore. It gets too hard to keep up with that stuff. And if you're on the website, the best way to search right now is by brand. So yep. you would click on the little, the little button that says FMS. It'll show you all the FMS yep. videos that we've done. Eventually I would like to categorize it with, you know, you know all of the jets or jets, yeah, all EDS. that kind of stuff. But you know, trainer, beginner planes, things like that. We're yeah. gonna get to that eventually. But the camera crew and my wonderful wife has been working her tail off, so check that out sometime when you get time. Really, it's all the same, you know, stuff you're gonna see here on YouTube. It's just gonna be a little bit more organized. And then when the links change, we can change one source and it fixes all of them. Instead of over here, we've got our video description where you'll see at the top, it'll see the plane, the particular battery that we selected for a particular plane or maybe a series of batteries and then usually a receiver and a plug and fly, a transmitter that we recommend. And that way you can just kind of like order the stuff that you need to get this in the air. Keep in mind, we try to be as totally transparent about this. This is not a beginner plane. Even if you know, you see me flying, you're like, Hey, it looks like you're doing really good. You're in a tight environment. I can imagine being good at that. Believe me, it takes years to get good at it. I am not the best pilot out there. There's tons, way better pilots than me. But the thing is, I'm a lot better than I was eight years ago or seven and a half years ago. And the skill level comes with time, practice, and a lot of failure. You learn a lot from failing in this hobby and I have had ample opportunity at it. I also do it a lot more than some people and less than others. So when you get ready to fly, don't expect to have success. Be very easy on yourself, plan on failures, get CA, get kicker, get glue, get ready to crash. Your first plane is gonna look like turds by the time you're done with it and ready for plane two. Or if you're like me, you'll have three or four planes that look like turds before you're ready for planes five, six, seven, and eight. And that's the way it is for everybody. So don't feel bad, don't go to the hobby shop and have them say, I don't need replacement props. Yeah, because you've been flying for 30 years. When you've been flying for one year, when you buy a plane, you buy a prop. When you yep. buy a plane, you buy a couple of batteries. When you buy a plane, you get glue. You know, you always stock it up on that stuff. And the next thing you know, you're 30 planes deep and you've got everything you need. If you get into a crash, it's not a big deal. You just fix it. You know, you're up in the air in another 45 minutes or an hour after you're done fixing it. So that is the real breakdown of time. We try to bring you the full truth and nothing but the truth here on Brian Phillips RC. So we hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned, so much more to come. We literally have tons of footage we want to release it all now, but we can't do that because we just can't. And we'll explain someday in the future, but stay tuned. Thanks for watching.